you know, people, y'all do know that um, living for Christ can sometimes become a selfish endeavor. Let me let me explain that to you. Because you're worried about others, but you're also working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, a lot of people are like, why you don't go out no more? And the thing is, it's not that you don't want to. It's like, but you know yourself. And you know, you're trying to resist temptation. You're trying to resist evil. You're trying to resist certain things. So it's come selfish. And people are going to look at you like, you don't hang with us no more. That's, it's not about you, really. If I'm strong enough to get out there and hang with you, and God feels I'm strong enough to go back out there. Because I'd have been out there and fell horribly. You understand? Thinking I'm strong enough to go out there and hang around the people and reach them that I used to be able to reach. Am I saying I ever I, I stopped reaching folks? But I found, found myself being more like them than being more like Christ. So I, if God decided to set me apart, I'm told I done tried to visit folks and it's weird, man. I'll try to go over people's houses. Something happened. They ain't there. This and that. I'm talking about the weirdest things happen when God shows you he don't want you certain places. I'm going to tell you something. When God wants you somewhere, it's going to be so smooth to get there. Now, you got to understand what I'm saying. When you call, your, call yourself a Christian and you call on the Lord, you will see where he wants you to go. It's going to be like, whoo, 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 you there. But when God doesn't want you, don't be like that donkey getting in the way. What you doing? Hey, man, I, I see an angel up there. I see something up there that you don't see. And why you hitting me? Why are you hitting me? It's going to be like that. It's going to be that hard to go when you're trying to go. I always put it like when I used to smoke weed. And, uh, you know, you know you got your normal weed, man. And you going to his house, you know. Well, I ain't got none today, man. So you're like, okay, I got to find somebody else who got some weed. So you go to the next house. I ain't got no weed. Then you go to the third house. They ain't got none. You know, common sense will tell you, like, well, maybe it's not meant for me to get no weed today. <laughs> I'm just being real with you people. Red flags are everywhere. Like, if you got to try so hard, maybe it's not meant. How many times you rode around and you're like, I'm so hungry right now. And you go to so many different restaurants. It's like, when you pull up, you end up driving out. And then you just go home and fix something to eat. You think that's a coincidence? God leads us in so many ways, people, that y'all just got to understand it. God knows what's best for us. He knows the desire of our heart. You ever think about it like this? God might even know that that food that you're about to eat might be poisonous. It might be bad. You understand? Can I tell you a story that happened to me earlier this year? Like a co-worker of mine went to Win dixie and bought some sushi. I don't really like sushi. I try one bite and I can't eat no more. It's like, ugh, it's disgusting to me. You know what I'm saying? But two of two of the co-workers, they ate it. You know, but they asked me, they're like, you sure you want some of this? I was like, I, I'll eat it every once in a while. I just don't want none today. You understand? All right. They both get home. Come to find out they didn't got food poisoning. Both of them sick as a dog from eating that sushi. You see, I'm not saying I'm better. I'm just saying. Sometimes, God will protect you from things seen and not seen. You know, he don't want you to be out there running around, ripping and running. Don't know your left from your right. He want to be able to direct your path into a path of righteousness. He's not going to lead you nowhere that's going to encourage you to live unrighteously. Even when I was, when I first came back to Mobile, I was standing in the hotel room and I was bored then. You know, I was like, Lord, I just want to go out and chill out. It just so happens I was walking distance from a little bar. And I used to go there and chill. You know, I, I never got over over the, the the limit. And then I walked, so I didn't have to drive back. You understand? But even when I found myself trying to go out there and live for the world again, guess what I found myself doing in these bars? Ministry. Every, not every time. But you know, like my intentions may have been to do something stupid. But when I got there, I found myself ministering. And I was like, living for Christ is more different than I thought. 
You know, look how God protects you from yourself. Find yourself ministering. The weirdest place I've ministered to someone, people, and this is true, was at a strip club. When I went through my first divorce, I was a Christian, you know, but I was just lonely. I wanted to live for the world, so I went to the strip club. You understand? And I took a liking to this one girl, you know what I'm saying? And she was just telling me her problems. I'm like, I thought I was supposed to be telling you. <laughs> so oh, she telling me about herself, you know what I'm saying? And how she got a kid and she want to go back to school and stuff like that. And I didn't never really get a phone number, but I was on a, 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 a website at the time called Tag. And so I ended up leaving from her, but I told her, I said, you know, I actually prayed for her. Probably not at the strip club, but I have to actually prayed for her and pray for her to be on the right path and stuff. And um, so I was gone. I, I left. I left. Uh, I was in Huntsville at the time. I left Huntsville. And probably a few months later, the, the chick hit me up. She like, I left stripping. Uh, I went back to school. I'm doing good now. I'm like, she didn't have to tell me that. She found me on tag. And hit me up and let me know that she's no longer Christian. I mean, not Christian. No, no longer stripping. <laughs> you understand? God can use you in so many ways. One thing I'm going to let you realize when you call, I'm not telling you where you're supposed to be or where you don't supposed to be. God is sending you in some weird places as a Christian. But you got, like I told you, no such thing as a vacation. It's not just no such thing as a free ride for a Christian. You always got work to do. I don't care where you are. He'll turn you trying to do something stupid or evil into a work or a job for him. Don't you just want that kind of leadership in your life? Don't matter where you go, he's going to make it right. And if he don't want you there, he's going to push you away from them. You understand? And people don't understand. It's, try, it's hard to try to explain this to folks. Oh, you being funny. Oh, you don't hang with us. You understand what I'm saying? Well... I ain't, it's not for you to understand This is a self-seeking venture And while trying to find myself in Christ I'm going to try to bring other people to Christ at the same time Do you understand? Let me say that in slow motion While trying to find yourself in Christ Your whole goal is to walk worthily And bring other people to Christ too People tell me You've been doing this for years Houston What have you done for Christ? Probably a lot of stuff you wouldn't even know because this is my life This is my walk Not yours You need to be worrying about What you've been doing for Christ Instead of trying to worry about What the hell I've been doing for it Oh yeah I said it Take it how you want it Because you know Nobody knows your walk better than yours It's the same people like You know what You can walk a mile in my shoes I really don't want to I'm just hoping you can walk a mile In the right direction That's it That's it I don't want to walk what you walk. I don't want to been, go through what you've been through. You've been through different things for me. That's your testimony. To glory be to God, once you realize what you're going through serves a purpose. But you're going to, so a lot of people are going to live their whole life going through things, going through things, not realizing what it was all about, what it's all for. Now the Bible says the righteous will suffer Don't you Don't think the unrighteous don't suffer now They suffer too For doing unrighteousness And you suffer for what Righteousness say Righteousness is don't mean you're perfect It just means you're righteous But we know Just like the Bible said There's a perfection coming And don't you, that's what you want You want to reach perfection You don't want to die before your time you want to accomplish everything the Lord set on your mind to do before you leave this place. So you can go up there and be like, job well done, thou good and faithful servant. Instead of, who are you? I never knew you. Depart from me at work in equity. So those are the two words you're waiting for. Those are the only two words you're waiting for when it comes to the end. Come on in or get out. Basically, which one you want to hear? You understand? Now, this is from my Christian beliefs. I don't care what y'all believe, but this is what I believe. Because I'm a Christian. Guess what? You might want to jump on the bandwagon if you can. Why you can. You understand? 
Now, this the, the being a Christian is kind of weird, right? You're going to see people doing so much things, supposedly having so much fun. You guys will be like, no, not you. It looks fun. It's great. They're at Disneyland. Maybe I don't want you at Disneyland. Maybe I don't even want you at Six Flags. What's fun for them ain't going to be fun for you. Y'all ain't hearing me. What's fun for them is not going to be fun for you. Everything the world considers to be fun, you're going to realize when you start finding out the Christ, it's not going to be fun for you. He's not expecting you to walk the same way as the world walks. You understand? There's certain, no, I, let's simply put it this in a year's time, I get invited to multiple gatherings. Multiple, constant. Some, I refuse. It's not the only thing it's me to refuse because part of me wants to go. But the Lord is like, no, not this one. Another one. Not this one. Another invite. Not this one. Another invite. That one. Go to this one? Yeah. That one. Go to that one. That's what kind of leadership you want. I'm talking about, like I said, when it comes out a restaurant, go there. Don't go there. Go there. People houses. Don't. Just go home if you're going to go there. <laughs> Just being real, people. I'm going to tell you something. When times get real hard and you ask if you praying for a way out and you praying for God to fix a situation, let me tell you something, people. The answer ain't always going to be stand your ground. Sometimes it's going to be like flee through the back of the crowd. Go, leave. Don't even worry about it. I got you. Leave. I'm going to move you from here. Sometimes you have to make a decision like Lot. Get out. You see, sometimes people people think selfishness. You know what I'm saying? Lord, just make this right for me. Well, I am making it right for you. But in order to make it right for you, I got to remove you from this place and sit you somewhere else so I can work on this place without you around. Y'all ain't hearing me, man. You see, y'all want God to orchestrate everything for the world to evolve around you. It's not, it's not about you. <laughs> Just be ready to get kicked out of some places. To be embraced in some place and then get kicked out of them too. Until you get to where you need to go. Take this word and focus on it and have a blessed day.